Hello friends, today we're going to be looking at how to bid a 54 inch storm drain with the sharp soft estimator. So we jump in here, we hit setup, we'll go to jobs, we're going to set up a brand new job. We're going to call this job number 24-020. The numbering sequence could be anything you want for me, that would be the 20th job that I've bid in 2024. The date will go the 29th, I'll put a time to, uh, we'll go 3 p.m. and we're going to call this the Apple Ranch Project. The job type, we could select this completely customizable to whatever you want. I'll put Storm Drain because that's what we're currently um, going to be bidding. So I'll go to Storm Drain, hit select. Wherever there's a magnifying glass, you could click that. If I go to the company office, we'll go to Dirt Cheap Construction. And then the job status, again, fully customizable. We'll put in bidding for right now. I'm going to hit OK. Notice now we have a job that is ready for us to start bidding. So if we're looking at this job, it looks like it's a five-guy crew. Looks like three operators and three major pieces of equipment and a couple miscellaneous pieces of equipment. We have a viber plate back there. We have a shield. Um, but if we look at this, obviously our production is going to be a little bit slower because we're going to be pulling a shield in place. So we'll get to the point in the video where they look like they're going to pull the shield. Uh, they're getting ready to just dig a set, pull that shield, and then we're going to go through um, and insert this item into the estimator and then bid it for us. So notice that Apple Ranch project is the project. We'll double click it. Now we're going to activate that job. So what we were seeing on the video is them digging and pulling what looks to be a 54 inch RCP pipe. So we could hit the plus button. We can right click insert. If we have bid this before, we could have it in the ice item master. We're just going to insert it right now. So I'm going to put a insert 54 inch RCP. And I'm going to just go 2,500 lineal feet. So we could put a takeoff quantity in there. We could now go double click. And for us, we'll just call it a detail right now. So notice I could click on my equipment icons or my labor icons or my material icon. I want to click on the equipment. And I know I saw two excavators. So you see the excavators. And I'm going to go, uh, we'll call them maybe a 315 was that one in the back and maybe a 330 for the front. So I'm just hitting the space bar there. And then now I want to get a loader. So I'm going to click on the button and I'll go with uh, maybe a 938 size loader. So notice those three pieces of equipment are part of what I selected. As I drag those over, I'm now going to bring in the labor as well because that's the way I set up my tables. So notice there's those pieces of equipment. Now if I want to bring in the labor, I click on labor. And for me, I have them set up as labor. You can have them pipe layers, whatever groups you want. But notice if I click in there, I have a pipe layer and I also have a regular general labor. So I'm going to grab both of those in. The pipe labor is going to come in with his pickup truck. So we go from there. Now I could sit and look and make a determination. Do I want to bid this at 30 days? And notice that changes my production 83 feet a day. If I want to get in 100 feet a day, that now changes in my production. But remember, we also had that shield that we wanted to put in there. So if I go to my equipment, again, you could set this up any way you want. I think I also have that in my shoring item here. So it depends. All of this stuff can be completely customizable to you. Um, but for us, let's just go with a 16 foot long 28 foot deep shield, the deep shield, that's definitely not what we have um, in that job. But I could do slide rail, I could do a boring pit shield. You know, again, all of these things are, are items that you can put in that are specific to you. Uh, maybe I'll go with a. How about we go with a, a, a six and a four? So notice, even if I bring something in, I could quickly change that. It's got the durations and my equipment rates. So let's watch them install the pipe a minute, and then we're going to come back and build a trench profiler and then finish this item out. So if we're looking at this, they swing the pipe over. Look, he's putting some bedding down. Uh, the loader's loading the bedding there. 
It's coming back and throwing the rest of that on top of the pipe. So it looks like if we're looking at this, that there is going to be about six inches above the pipe and then the bedding and then the, the pipe. So I want to stop and I want to show you guys how to build a trench profiler in the SharpSoft estimator. So remember, we just finished up the detail in these where we picked some of the equipment. Now we're going to go to, for us, in the SharpSoft estimator is called the trench profiler. So I'm going to hit into the trench profiler. I'm going to hit the plus button, and we're just going to call this 54-inch SD, so 54-inch storm drain. If we know the start and stop station, we could put that. We could just hit next. So now we're going to do the section out of lineal foot. And then I want the length to be 2,500 lineal feet in the unit of measure lineal foot. If you're doing metric, this can all be set up in metric as well. So I hit next and I want a volume in cubic yards. So I hit finish. Notice now I have what looks nothing yet, but it's a trench profiler. So I'm going to put the sections. If we're going to do a vertical trench, I'm just guessing that the depth of this trench is right around 11 foot. The top width, so we have a 54 inch pipe. So let's go six inches on either side for the pipe and then another four inches, so 10 inches. So 54 plus 10 would be 64 plus another 10 would be 74 inch wide trench. So 74 divided by 12 is, we'll just call it 6 0.2 feet at the top. It'll be the 6.2 feet at the bottom. No slope. We're going to hit OK. Now notice we have what looks like a trench here. So the fill section, we're going to go a little bit of sub base and then rock up and around the pipe, right? So we're going to hit the insert a fill section. We're going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call it crush rock. You could choose the color you want here. Um, I'll call it orange. I'll hit OK. So I now want to look up that material. So I know it's in my aggregates. Again, this is customizable to you. So I'm going to go to the rock and I'm just going to put a three quarter inch crush rock. Double click that. And now what I want to do is I want to link that to that bid item. There's the base group. There's that RCP. I select it. And then now I'm going to hit OK. And it'll pick the vendors that I have. So you could pick any vendor you want. And notice there's different pricing. We're demo data, so this pricing will be specific to you. But it will keep track of every vendor that you get that material from. So because we put it at the 11-foot depth, I want to double-click that. And now I don't want it at the 11-foot depth. I want it at 4 inches below the pipe, 54-inch pipe, plus six inches above. So it's going to be 54 plus 12 will be 66 inches, right? So we'll just do 5.5 feet. I could add, if I wanted to, a waste or a shrinkage. So I'll just put a 5%. And notice now when I change this 5.5, it's going to change that volume now to 4,840 ton. So if we stopped now, we would see that rock being added, that crushed rock being added to our trench profile. I'll show you how to add the pipe here in a minute and then the rest of the backfill that will show the spoils. Let's watch a little bit more of the video and see what they got going on. So if we notice, these guys just finished up fine grading down there with the ditch. So now we're going to set that piece of pipe. So because it's a larger piece of pipe, it's being set with the excavator. So they grab it, they get it in, get ready to stab it. Notice there's also a viber plate down here inside uh, for the compaction. And there's also a viber plate, a small little viber plate um, inside the trench. And then now he's going to go back and he's going to uh, disconnect, put back in his bucket and dig another set. So the loader's going to go back and start to get some rock. We'll start to see the backfill start really quick. You can see kind of on the right hand side that he's got a, um, a bucket and he's also got a compaction wheel back there a little bit. So here comes that loader dumping in uh, rock over the top of the pipe, through the sides of the pipe. And as they're digging getting ready to dig the next set, 
they're working on the pipe, stacking the haunches, and then getting that trench ready to be um, dug and the trench shield to be pulled. Notice in the background now the excavator has started with his backfill, and now he's going to be switching out the bucket um, from the compaction wheel. Let's take a stop and let's finish up this bid and, and get us rolling out of here. Back into the bid here, we have our crush rock. Uh, we made some changes to the shoring. If I want to just put two of those and delete the four footer, we delete that, no problem. I'm going to go back into the trench profiler here. I'm just going to double click it. So notice the 4,800 tons. I double click that. It brings me back into there. Let's just say if I want to change my depth, notice it's at 4,800. I come into here and I want the depth now to be six foot. The moment I hit OK, that tonnage has now changed. Now I want to add a pipe in there, right? So we're going to go here and I'm just going to call this 54 inch storm drain. We'll go uh, distance from subgrade. We'll call it 0.5. We could put it in the center. I'll pick a color again. I'll go with a green color. Hit OK. The diameter, we'll call it uh, 54 and we'll call the wall thickness uh, 2 call it uh, three inches there. So notice when we get this done, it's asking for now a material. So now I want to link the material. There's my drain pipe. Again, these categories are custom to you. I want to go to the RCP and I scroll down and I want to put the 54 inch RCP. So we'll double click that. And then now the moment I hit OK, it's going to add that pipe. I'll pick the default, default vendor code. These are demo prices. I'll hit select. And notice now I have a storm drain pipe that has been added. I clicked on elliptical. That's why it's not showing in there. It's not an elliptical pipe, so I'll hit OK. And then now there's that 54-inch pipe. Notice my tonnage went down. So I can move this up, this pipe. And notice it changes my tonnage from here. Or I can bring it back down so it's inside that area. And now, so now it's telling me my volume excavated is 6,300 cubic yards. And my total spoils is 6,300 on 2,500 feet. Now I'm going to go into here and create another section up above. And I'm just going to call this native And then I'll, I'll we'll just go to the top. We'll call it, uh, we'll go with a little bit of a reddish maroon color. I want to click this icon here for native. Now, once I click native, it still tells me the volume excavated, but notice my spoils has changed because this is now going to remain on site. So there's my pipe with tonnages there. So now we're notice at, at 3,000. The moment that we click OK, that pipe and that 3000 crush rock has been added. If I want to come in here for any given reason, and let's just say I want to change the width to seven, and now it's a seven foot wide trench. Notice what happens right here, completely real time, 3700. Click OK. So now that trench profiler is there. This could be done if we wanted to tweak this out a little bit and say, you know what, I really want to get aggressive. It's 22 days. There's our bid. We're going to go to what we call our summary sheet now. That's where we place our markup. So notice we're tracking material. There's our material. There's our labor. There's our owned equipment. And there's our rented equipment. So we can see a detail. If we are tracking burden and benefit, if we're tracking the equipment, there's our burden. And then we also have a fuel and oil there. So we can get to as much detail as you want. We also have that material uh, broke out as well. So just to kind of show a couple things while we're in here, notice that 5023 for the pipe. If I wanted to, we do have something called the material comparison. I won't get in that. We have other videos about that. But if I want to change the price, let's just call it uh, $65 a foot. I hit OK. I update the table, default vendor code. I hit OK. Now, every time I bring in that code, that recent price is going to be there. So just to show you what that looks like, material 54 inch RCP CL3. So notice I have three prices, but that $65 right here has been changed on 129, 2004.
So it's a real-time database that is growing with you as you're working, so you don't have to worry about um, continually updating. It's doing it by itself. So as we go back into the summary sheet here, again, we could put those markups where you can load standard markups if you want. So if I hit a load and I just want a, a 512.4 markup, notice those are the markups. It's now a $336,000 job. We go to rounding sheet. There's that. I could put a, any amount of money I want in here. Notice there's my bid with markup. If I want to make this $140 a lineal foot, that's my bid, $350,000 with the information uh, that we have. If there's multiple bid items, we could talk about rounding sheet. You could move money up and down flexibility. If I go to report, report tree, proposal, and hit OK, your logo here, your construction name. This is Sharpsoft. We're here to help you guys out. If you need anything, there's our phone number. There's the email. And there's a professional looking proposal with a 54 inch RCP, the quantity, the unit hidden, and then the total overall price. We're thankful for the opportunity to show you what we can do and bid a 54-inch RCP job. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Be blessed.